We've been able to control computers with our minds since the 90s and have been playing video games with our minds since the early 2000s. Ladies and gentlemen, today is gonna be an absolutely awesome adventure through the world of science and technology. And all of it started because I was watching an anime. So I hope you guys like this episode. I hope you guys are here to hang out because I get to show you guys something cool that I learned about and introduce you guys to something cool that I really like. So without any further ado, let's get into it. I'm sure you guys have heard that the world of gaming is doom and gloom and AAA is over and the consoles are dying and we're never gonna see another golden age of gaming again, but I would like to use this right here to prove to you that the next golden age is right around the corner. This video is definitely gonna be a little bit more upbeat than my last video talking about the deep, dark, depressing world of Power World. And we're gonna get into what I think is going to be an absolutely epic form of gaming. So anyway, the thing that brought all this on was the fact that I've been watching an anime lately called Shangri-La Frontier. No, that doesn't make me a weeb, it's just, there's nothing else on television. It's just, that's just how it is. Anyway, I've been checking out this anime called Shangri-La Frontier and the premise is pretty simple. It's a kid on his summer break and he's gonna be playing the world's best video game. And he usually plays really bad video games as a challenge, but now he's stepping into the world of Shangri-La Frontier. Now in that show, you see them put on a headband and lay down in bed and start playing this very, very detailed, intricate MMORPG. Now that got my brain thinking, well, wait a minute here. How close are we in real life to something like that? Is it even possible for us to literally throw on a headband with, you know, the goggles over your eyes and the phones over your ears and actually play something that that is that immersive? Well, to my surprise, I went down a rabbit hole that really, really made me excited to see the world of tomorrow's gaming. Now, when it comes to the world of VR gaming, I feel like it's more memeable than it is anything else. And it's obviously given us some great clips like this. Oh my God. But overall, the technology is moving forward all of the time and what we're able to accomplish with it and what they're combining with it from another world of study is absolutely incredible. So in order to get VR headsets like we have in the show, Shangri-La Frontier, you have to have something that basically connects the headband to your brainwave activity. Now, if you guys have seen this before, you probably know where I'm going, but if you're not familiar with this, we're gonna dive into the world of BCI technology, which is brain computer interface technology that has actually been around for quite a long time. Now, BCI technology piggybacks off of EEG technology, which is the ability to read brainwave function, which was discovered back in 1929. Yeah, we've been able to read brainwave function since 1929, which is absolutely insane. So moving forward, we get to the 1970s where EEG technology has definitely gotten a lot better. And in fact, has been used at that point to discover a lot of illnesses and things like that. But in the 1970s, a guy by the name of Jacques Vidal, hopefully I'm saying that, Jacques, Jacques Vidal? Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. But in the 1970s, Jacques Vidal posed the question in his paper toward direct brain computer communication. And again, this was in 1973. In that paper, he says this. This posed the question, information in man computer communication or for the purpose of controlling such external apparatus as prosthetics devices or spaceships even on the sole basis of the present state of the art computer science and neurophysiology one may suggest that such a feat is potentially around the corner now we had no idea how correct he was because this technology started taking off once people started trying to figure out how exactly we could get brainwave technology to start controlling machines. And then, believe it or not, in 1991, yeah, the year that I was born, and in fact, when this study took place, I wasn't even born yet. I was, I was still in my mom's stomach. But in 1991, a guy by the name of Wolpaw put together a study with people who had severe motor function disabilities, right? They were, they, they couldn't move. They couldn't walk on their own. But he was able to hook up a machine, which was a BCI, that sat on the outside of their scalps. And within just a few weeks of training, they were able to move a mouse cursor on a computer screen to targeted locations 
on that screen within three seconds of being given the command, which you start thinking about that in 1991, most people didn't even know what the internet was. Most email wasn't even really a thing then. Again, we're in the infancy of a lot of technology like that. And yet these guys were already blazing trails to where we could have gotten rid of mouse and keyboards a long time ago. But yet nobody really knows about this. Now, before we get really deep into it, BCI technology is pretty basic. What it does is it can either sit on the outside of your scalp or they can uh, drill a hole and actually put some stuff in. And the early versions of the stuff that read your brainwaves directly is kind of gnarly. Won't be showing those pictures here today, but they can put a computer chip. And what it does is it just reads the signals on your brain, digitizes that signal, and then sends it out to a machine. Now, Honestly, not too hard to understand, but the way that they go about accomplishing all of this is absolutely insane. Those studies are awesome. You guys should definitely go check out more of it. However, in the early 2000s, by 2003, they were already developing video games for BCI technology, where people were actually able to give more complex commands. Instead of just moving left, right, up, or down, they were actually able to give the commands in these video games. One of the earliest ones that I heard of was called BrainGate, but I actually couldn't find anything on that at all. So if you guys have any information on that, I would really love to see it. I looked for it for a while and I just couldn't find anything. But there were a plethora of other games coming out at the time in order for people to test this technology to its limits. Now, moving forward, going on into 2012. Yeah, 2012, guys, 12 years ago. There's actually a video on YouTube and I'll put it up here where a guy actually played World of Warcraft wearing nothing but a BCI helmet. Now this thing is big, it's bulky, it's definitely not as slimmed down as what we see in the anime Shangri-La Frontier, but it is absolutely incredible to watch this go down. To think that in 2012, we were actually had the capabilities to play an MMORPG wearing a big bulky helmet. Now, not as comfortable as holding that controller in your hand or even you know playing on a mouse and keyboard, and that's probably what held the technology back uh, up to this point. However, fast forwarding all the way to 2021, I came across a channel called Virtual Reality Oasis, and he tested a BCI technology that was called NextMind. It was a small portable thing that could be charged from a USB, and it was able to click on to the back of your ball cap or to the back of your VR headset and read the brainwave activity from your brain and then send those signals into the game. And as you can see here in this clip, he's actually popping heads off of aliens with nothing but the power of his mind. He was able to network all of this technology together into a fully functional game playing alien slaying machine, which I just think is freaking awesome. But now that we've gone through like 15 years of the technology and how it's advanced and where it's going, the next question to ask is, well, the first question, are we close to fully immersive VR gaming where you put the headset on, you kick back in your chair, and you control these games using the power of nothing but your mind? So the first one, do we have VR headsets that work? Yes. Can we control these video games with BCI technology? Yes, although limited in function, but we're getting there. Now, the third one is a little different because in Shangri-La Frontier, one of the things that makes these games fully immersive is that you can actually feel your character move in the game and you can actually feel a lot of things happening inside of that game. So you're getting bi-directional BCI technology where it doesn't just receive information from your brain, but can also send information to it. Now, as far as I know, from what I was able to look into, the bi-directional communication is still in its infancy so we're not quite there yet. So all of that being said, we're still a few years away and probably many years away from having a fully immersive experience like that. I mean, I don't know what you guys are gonna say. This is the matrix. It's all gonna go downhill and it, guys, but it's gonna be like a really cool five or 10 years before they throw us into the pods and make us food for the machines. Like, like keep in mind, there's gonna be a really awesome period between like, oh dear God, they're feeding us to the machines. And like, dude, this is really, really cool. You gotta check this game out, right? And that's what I'm excited for. Not all of life can be fantastic, but some of life is going to be. And I started looking even further into this. How close are we? And what is the first BCI VR headset that we can actually go out and purchase today. Well, I found it. 
It's called uh, Galia, Galia. I, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. And I couldn't actually believe that they were able to network all of the technology with VCI and VR into one headset and put it on the market. The bad part about this is, is that the Galia headset costs $25,000. That, that's, dude, that's more expensive than cars. Like that's, that's several good used cars that you can buy. That's a second mortgage on my house. That is more than the cost of some people's annual salaries in the US. This is absolutely way too expensive for commercial use right now. But if you guys hung out all the way to the end of this video, the one thing that I really wanna tell you guys is I'm very excited for where this goes. In 50 years, we've gone from the idea of can we control machines with our brains to we are controlling machines with our brains. I mean, there are prosthetic limbs out there that are completely controlled by neurochips that people are receiving. In fact, we've actually had neurotechnology, BCI technology like this, fix a number of issues with the human body and make connections, make those pathways connect again so people can move their limbs again. Again, this stuff is absolutely incredible. And honestly, I really have to say, going down this rabbit hole and seeing the future of gaming and what we're gonna have very soon, I owe it to watching an anime called Shangri-La Frontier. It's an absolute blast, the fights are incredible, and honestly, it gives me a reason to talk about this really, really cool stuff with you guys. So, if you guys have made it all the way to the end of the video, do me a favor, mind control that subscriber button. Do that. Do, well, you can't mind control it. Do the old school way, the low tech way. Use your mouse, click subscribe. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for being here. And as always, until next time, cheers, everybody. then it is practical. Now, when it comes to the world of VR gaming, I feel like it's more memeable than it is practical. Uh. Now, when it comes to the world of... Fuck. Now, when it comes to the world of VR, I feel like it's more memeable than it is practical. Uh, can't say words today.